Hello, my name is Sanne and welcome to the part two of uh, me visiting Octo at the Salt Pier on Bonaire. And this is Bonaire, there's a the Salt Pier and uh, I went in on, when was this? Friday. These are beautiful pictures of the uh, Salt Pier. It's the same as the last spot because that's where Octo is. So I just went in there. And uh, this is a picture of last time. Last time my camera fell down like hundreds of times. So we mounted the metal piece underneath it. I thought this, I think. So this time the camera was steady and we got photobombed by so cute fish. I really liked it. This is also, I just love to look back the video and make very cute stills. This is like a group picture. It's so funny, I, you know. Okay, and I put the camera on ultra wide, I think. So it's really like a fishbowl, actually. And I think that's a good thing because now, as you can see, Octo is there. He was there again. Um, he is pretty sharp. And it's just a better image, I think. So uh, what I like about this video, oh yeah, this was not so good. Uh, you can see the progression of the bleach in only five days. It's terrible. And I don't know what to do about it. You know, it's terrible. And it will just progress. It's really sad, you know, to see that also in the video, but okay. Apart from that, there's Octo. He's looking, I have no clue, pretty happy. And in this video, you see way more color shifting and also way more action because the camera does not fall down. And that's something I'm very happy about <laughs> because you can really see like the beautiful way Octo moves. So first he goes dark. And he just takes it from the other fishes. And he's again like going on the ground with his tentacles. Maybe to check if there's something else around. And then he goes back and then he does something funny. Look at this. Maybe it's just for stretching. <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, but it looks pretty amazing. Maybe he just tries to fit in again in the right way. It's probably very narrow there. And it goes very dark again. If somebody knows why, uh, if the colors mean something. And there he is again. This fish, I actually looked it up. It's a damselfish, but it's called a bow Gregory. So Gregory, our fish, <laughs> he loves the camera. And I really like it that he passes by all the time. I mean, he also looks good on camera, so it's not a bad thing. Oh yeah, this one I really gave it to his head. He was probably very happy with it. Gregory, not so much. Yeah, so it's actually interesting because a lot of these fishes look a little bit alike. Ooh, that's a butterfly fish, spot fin, spot fin butterfly fish. Now Gregory is happy. All those uh, small fishes you see is that are gobies, cleaning gobies, I think. Oh, and look at the color change. He goes black. It's amazing. So what is actually, how do, does an octopus do that? I looked something up and it is, uh, it's a video and I really recommend you watch it if you think it's interesting. It's called the insane biology of the octopus. And so the, mm, the octopus skin is actually, you know, his arms has two third of his neurons. So he actually can taste, um, and what is it? Taste, see, no, taste, smell. I think with his arms, there are like uh, a lot of neurons in there. That's like totally different. They can think on their own. And their skin is has several layers. So four layers. The first, they call it the papillae, papillae, papillae structure. 
that's what you, he can make a structure with it. So he can make points or whatever to look like the surroundings. And then he has three other layers. In one, there are the chromophores. Though those give chromatophores, I have to say, black, red, and yellow. And this is where he can make colors with, especially black. You could see that. That's like a top layer. Then underneath, there are two layers of reflective uh, thingies, <laughs> force. You have the iridophores and the lusophores. And the lusophores is the lowest layer, and that's like the white reflection. So that's what we probably see here. So he can just, you know, activate this in his skin, in his arms, that thing for and smell for themselves. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. And I looked that one up. That's a hawkfish a red spotted hawkfish it's a bottom dweller and he has red spots on his nose maybe we can see him there he is again he's so cute he looks like hello <laughs> but okay oh and now he comes out look at it with the self-thinking arms going black white black it looks amazing you know, and this color shifting is also something, you know, that's the four, four eye. This is a four eye uh, butterfly fish because it has like two eyes and then on his back he has two eyes. So in total four. I think those are really cute. They're also, most of the time there were two and they just go together. Really nice. Um, oh yeah, and that's a banded butterfly fish. Pretty cool. We see him on this smaller camera. He was just hanging around. Oh, and there's the hawkfish again. Um, okay, so the color shifting is something really rare in the nature because he can do it like in faster than we can blink. And it goes so fast because it's not hormonal regulated. Like in uh, chameleons, they go really slow changing colors because it's hormonal and hormones goes less quick than neural. So this is like a neural color change. And one research guy has documented that he had, that the octopus had changed color 177 times in one hour. So that's pretty impressive. Maybe I should count it. How many times? No, I don't, I don't think I can count it. I should ask how the researchers did it because maybe I need better equipment to do that. But okay. So the octopus is like, uh, in that movie, they say it's uh, uh, as close to alien life as we may ever seen. And that's because like in, if we go back in history and we look where uh, the animals are and the fishes and the, you know, we go back to the lizards. But before that was like how many years ago? 320, but I don't see it here. Um, long time ago 320 million or 600 million i'm not sure but then you have like the lizard and from the lizard goes mammals uh, fish uh, all the that kind of stuff and then very early on the octopus said it has its own whole you know development evolution branch it's crazy so it's really distinct from any other form and it's really intelligent because it has like five five hundred million neurons humans have 100 billion so that's a little bit more um just to put it in perspective yeah and so one third of his neurons is in his brain two thirds is in his arms and he's really he's really smart yeah and also he can move very uh Flexible. I mean, for me as a yoga teacher, it's really an inspiration to <laughs> see his flexibility. No, <laughs> I mean, no, but he can really go like his beak, I think, is like the thing or his eyes that cannot move. So he can go through anything that's like a little bit bigger than uh, the part that is not that's not flexible. So it's, it's also crazy an anatomy. There you see a four eye butterfly fish and the spot fin butterfly fish. Gregory is there. Oh, yeah, and there's the divers. 
Okay, first of all, this was really not so nice. You see the diver over there. He's really busy with his camera. His buoyancy sucks, you know? He's like moving around. He cannot buoyancy. That's like when you float and you're not going like this. You really have to control that, especially if you're hanging above corals. And then he goes with his fins over the corals, you know, too busy making a picture and not seeing anything around it. It's, you see? I don't get why they go in the water here because you're just wasting air. You should go to the to the buoy in the water, then you go down, die for 60 minutes or whatever, and then you can do your safety stop in the shallow water without touching the coral on the ground. But okay. This was it. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and here's a group picture that I like so much. See you next time. Bye.